Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Croatia joined millions of Catholics around the world in commemorating All Saints Day, a national holiday. Most people spent the day with their families and visited the graves of their loved ones. Zagreb Archbishop Cardinal Josip Bozanic led Mass at the Church of Christ the King at Mirogoj Cemetery this afternoon. We are here today to pray for our deceased family members and for all the departed faithful. We also think about holiness and our Christian call to holiness and to the call for the intercession of all saints. In a bid to avoid unnecessary traffic congestion, Zagreb Mayor Milan Banic provided two days of free public transportation to and from Zagreb's three main cemeteries. A commemoration was held in Bleiburg, Austria in honor of the Croatian soldiers and civilians who were massacred at the end of the Second World War by Yugoslav partisans. A procession was held from the monument to the victims in Unterleubach Cemetery to Bleiburg Field, the site of the massacre. According to the latest study conducted in 2007, it is believed that Yugoslav forces killed 60,000 Croatians at Bleiburg, including another 20,000 Slovenes, Germans and Serbs. More than 300,000 people were killed in Slovenia in the aftermath of the war. Slovenes, Croatians and some others, including civilians and disarmed soldiers. So Slovenia is in effect one mass grave. A dead man, regardless of which army he served, his ethnicity, nationality or religious persuasion, cannot be an enemy. And all of those who are still alive and know that their loved ones are still missing have the right to piety and to visit, if at all possible, the final resting place of their loved ones. In more news from this holiday Wednesday, Predrag Stroma, the president of the People's Party, the government's junior coalition partner, paid his respects at Zagreb's Mirgoj Cemetery. Stromar, a deputy prime minister in the current government, responded to media speculation of a growing rift between his party and the majority HDZ. He said that if there were any disagreements between him and the prime minister, they would be resolved through constructive dialogue and not through the media. We are communicating with the Prime Minister on a daily basis and with the inner team from the HDZ. We will always maintain communication, but we will not do so through the media. In international news, authorities in neighboring Bosnia and Herzegovina have handed over the man assumed to be the intelligence chief of the so-called Islamic State to the United States Justice Department. Mirsad Kandic, born in Kosovo in 1981, was arrested in a rented flat in Sarajevo earlier this summer. Kandic, one of the most wanted men on the planet, had successfully evaded capture since 2014. I would like to stress that we are talking about an extremely dangerous individual. The man was at the very top of the hierarchy within the ISIL terrorist organization and held a number of crucial positions, responsible for both the overall and operational functionality of the so-called Islamic State. We can say that he was the brain of the entire terrorist organization. And back to local news, a 40-kilometer bicycle marathon held on Halloween night that began as a playful gathering of cycling enthusiasts has grown into a 13-year tradition for the town of Bjelovar. Dozens of people, some in full Halloween costumes, took part in last night's humanitarian event. All donations gathered by the Bjelovar Bicycle Club were donated to a local girl suffering from cerebral palsy. A team of young dancers from Chakovets have taken home the gold and silver medals at the World Dance Championships in Rome. The renowned Vivona Dance Studio has been teaching modern dance for more than 30 years, encouraging children to express themselves through the art of movement. Taking a quick look at sports, defending Croatian league champs Rijeka will host FK Austria in the fourth round of the Europa League tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Head coach Matias Kek said he was approaching the game with caution, adding that it was not wise to judge their opponents based on their previous game, which Rijeka won in Vienna 3-1 only two weeks ago. He said the Austrians were a much more dangerous team away from their home turf. Rijeka is looking to make a strong showing after suffering three straight losses at home. Despite all the problems, they know how to play a tactical mature game. They are capable of being a serious threat, especially if you don't have a well-organized and executed game plan. 
In regional EBEL Hockey League action, Zagreb's Medveshchak beat Czech side Znojmo 1-0 in Zagreb last night. This is the Bears' third consecutive win, and they are now in sixth place in the 12-team league. And finally, in NBA basketball, Croatia's Bojan Bogdanovic had an impressive performance in the Indiana Pacers' 101-83 win over the Sacramento Kings last night, recording 17 points, 3 rebounds and 4 assists. And 19-year-old Dragan Bender scored 10 points for the Phoenix Suns in their 122-114 win over the Brooklyn Nets. The forecast for tomorrow calls for partly sunny skies throughout the country and slightly warmer. The northern Adriatic and Gorski Kotar can expect increased clouds and the chance of light showers in places. Winds in the interior during the first half of the day will be weak, followed by a moderate southwesterly in the afternoon. The north and central Adriatic will get a weak to moderate southwesterly wind, while the south will see a weak southeasterly. Seas moderately wavy, but visibility good. Morning lows are between minus 1 and plus 4 degrees in the interior, and between 8 and 12 on the coast will give way to highs of 12 to 17 in the interior and 16 to 20 degrees Celsius on the coast. The forecast for the next few days in continental regions will continue to be partly sunny and noticeably warmer. Friday can expect more clouds and light rain, but mostly in mountainous areas and the far east. Morning fog will be heaviest on Friday and Saturday. Sunday may see a moderate to strong southwesterly wind. The Adriatic coast will also be mostly sunny and warmer. Friday will see short rain showers, while Saturday and Sunday will get rain in northern areas. Rain will spread to the rest of the coast by the beginning of next week. Friday's winds will come out of the northwest, while Sunday can expect a strong southwesterly and southeasterly. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow night.